Hello, welcome once again. Today we're going to go and delve into again the hot subject of fuel pumps because this can cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Okay, this relay can cost you very little money. There's a difference between diagnosing this is the problem or this is the problem or the computer is the problem. Not to mention the labor rate. If they're charging 120, 130 an hour, there's a labor rate in charge also with a fuel pump, which is in the fuel tank. So there's a lot of money and you have to understand when, to, when this is not the problem. Now, let's start again. Okay, many comments about how fuel pump, how to diagnose it. I split this in half, this diagram, when I zoom out. I want to get to the part that's easy access, and I want to get to the part that's not easy access. This is a hard place to get to the fuel pump. So we're going to concentrate on this section right here. This section, I can get to the relay, I can get to the fuses, I can get to uh, a power control module if, if I need to. That's not easy to get to in itself also, to get to the right pins and the right connector. First thing is first, concentrate on this thing. Now, always when you see a fuel pump relay, first things that come to your mind <clears throat> in a schematic, I know there's a relay. I know there's a fuel pump, main components. I know there's a computer that might be involved. The computer can give a, a 12 volts <clears throat> to the relay, to this control side, or it can give a ground <clears throat> to this side. Since we have a physical ground over here, how do I know? This is a physical ground. How do I know? Because it's G102 and this dot symbolizes the physical ground. Therefore, the computer is not connected to this side. Let's go to the other side. Is computer connected to the other side? We see power train control module. And the reason I'm doing this once again is because there were many comments about the confusion of how to analyze and how to troubleshoot. So we'll try to we'll try to make it as easy as possible. Now, the one I'm using over here is this schematic is a little different than you're used to seeing the other ones. This is not Mitchell, not the other ones that you used to seeing. This is from the actual manual from the dealership that I have many of them. And these are very co complex, complex mo uh, um, manuals. So for if you're a beginner, not really the best thing to start from. But we'll try to go through it. Anyway, powertrain control module over here. This is a f uh, an internal switch that's flipped to 12 volts. How do I know this is 12 volts? Did I just draw it? There has to be 12 volts in the computer, correct? So. This is at the rest position. When this is flipped, this is a closed circuit over here, as I drew over here. Which side do we start with? Always in a relay, always. This should come automatic to you. This is the load side. Where is the load? This is the load in this case. Could be the starter motor. <clears throat> Could be the fuel pump in this case. We start on this case because without him, he will not work. He will not work. So what's the common sense logic thing to do? Go on this side. We start on this side. So we have 12 volts coming in from the computer. When the computer says it's good to give 12 volts to close the switch. <clears throat> so right now, the computer is the boss. He controls 12 volts to the top of this relay. Okay. Once that happens, current flows from here, from this a, a module, a computer, through here, with a, a resistor that's in parallel, over here, and through here. Now, there's one thing missing over here that you don't see. What do you expect to see that we don't see here? I'll give me a hint. A fuse. Where is there a fuse here? Is it likely that you do not have a fuse in a control line of a relay circuit? It's impossible not to have it. So therefore, let's try to use some logic. This is the fuel pump relay control. And the magic word here is control. When you th hear control, that means the computer is giving you something 
and at the same time he can take it away when you start the the, the cranking in the start position and the starter motor starts to the flywheel to the crankshaft if he, he can decide i'll give you the fuel pump to to send fuel pressure to give fuel pressure to send fuel to the fuel injectors when he sees that being accomplished if he doesn't see that being accomplished and not being turned over let's say the engine's not being turned over he can say i can take away the 12 volts what's the purpose of of giving you the fuel pump if there's if the engine is not working it's not being turned over he could do to the fuel injectors the same thing he could say i could take away the grounds from the fuel injectors the main point i'm trying to make is he controls this. When you see the word control, thing that should pop in your head is he gives the computer is giving you something. But just like he has the ability to give you something, he has the ability to take away something. We giveth and we taketh away, right? So therefore, he'll give you the 12 volts, right? To start the relay to get current flowing. If he sees, for whatever reason, Let's say the engine is not turning over for whatever reason it is, whatever it is, he can take this away from you and say, you know what, instead of 12 volts, I'm going to give you zero volts. Zero volts over here, no current flowing. No current flowing over here, guess what's going to happen to him? Nothing. No fuel pressure. Again, some modules have it for the fuel injectors. The computer controls the fuel injectors in all modules, actually. They control the grounds to the fuel injectors when the engine is engaged if it's not engaged he's not going to give you the fuel he's not going to turn on the fuel injectors so again try to keep that in mind however let's okay so there's no fuse over here before this train power control module there's another part that's not included in this that's why i say the manual the service manual is a very very complex way to learn schematics i've been doing it for 30 years so it's not I understand what's going on here. But otherwise, for a beginner, it's very complex. There has to be a fuse over here before this PCM. There has to be a fuse. You don't see this in this picture. So over here, there will be some fuse going to the battery. Why do I say that? Imagine if you don't have a fuse. What's between here and here and the ground? this what happens if this gets shorted out let's say i take a jumper wire and put it across here what's going to happen to this power train control mod we're going to fry it until the fuse burns right opens up right so therefore you have to have the the common sense to say there has to be a fuse but it's not in this in this diagram okay again we start off first on this side all the time uh, get to the relay in a second to show you because now I think it's more appropriate to show you these things Again, always start on this side. This cannot happen without this Okay That's the most important thing Now other thing is once this is engaged we have current flowing over here great Then what happens over here? current flows over here Through here and where is this? Where is this? contact this contact for went from here to here is the circuit closed i drew 87 terminal 87 and drew terminal 30 with stars there's a reason for that this has current flowing through 30 current is flowing through 30 from the two think of this ecm on the bottom 20 amps going through 30 going through 30 the switch is over here in the rest position. Since the since this switch is in the rest position, what happens to 87? Nothing. No current can flow between here and here. This switch is now being activated. How? And that's the magic word. How do you know that? Because this has current flowing through it. An electromagnetic field is being induced. And you see this dotted line. That means this controls him. So now 30 goes to 87 30 the current from to this through this The current that's going let's say ECM B which is connected on this side a 20 amp fuse goes through here 
This is in the closed position. So now current can flow here to here. Even though this diagram on this doesn't support that theory, but we have to uh, implement it to put it in that visually, visually in our minds, this switch is closed in here. Therefore, current can flow from here to here. From the fuse, you see MB, to here, 87. What's the other side of 87? The fuel pump. So this is connected to the fuel pump. This is connected to what? This is connected to the fuse. That's hot at all times. That means it's always hot. You always, If you put your probe here, regardless of the ignition switch, whatever, whatever it's in, I'm always going to have 12 volts here. I'm always going to have 12 volts over here. Will I have 12 volts over here all the time? Is it hot at all time? No. Why? Because it depends if there's current flowing here. Therefore, when this is connected, then I have 12 volts here. Very important, 12 volts over here. And now I go to the fuel pump, 12 volts. Now I have current flowing from here to ground. Okay, so this is the coil. 85 and, 85 and 86 is here. This is the coil part with a little resistor here. I don't know if you can see it over here. But anyway, and this part is this part. Why am I stressing this? Why am, I, why am I even showing you the relay? I can just show you the schematic. Because in order to understand the technique that I did on my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, you see I put a wire over here. I always go to this point. This is the, to me, this is the output. <clears throat> this is the last place that I can measure before looking for the fuel pump and measuring the fuel pump, which is a hard task to find the wire going to the to the fuel pump. It might be in a seat, it might be in a fuel tank, it might be all over. That's the last thing that we want to do. This is easy access. So I choose this point to give me the information, the data that I need. I measure 12 volts here. <clears throat> I measure 12 volts over here at pin 87. What does that tell me? What does that tell you as a viewer? If I have 12 volts here, what's the first thing that should come to your mind in a computerized fuel injection system? Is the computer doing his job? Is he on? You, if you said yes, you're correct. What's engaging this, the computer? Current is flowing here. What's engaging him? Him. If he's engaged because he, <coughs> he engaged him, the computer, that means the computer is good. That means this is good. That means my ground is good. That means the fuse is good. That means this wire is good. That means this switch contact switch from here to here therefore i have 12 volts over here in one shot i just verified to you that the computer is working without jumping this without putting a power probe to this without doing anything just putting a wire if you see the video on my channel joe i'll try some ads for auto and i'll mention it again the views went up for a little like I said, I have two channels. One might be just the theory. The other one might be the real hands-on. I need about 800 more hours to get <clears throat> monetized. What I did was I used a basic, <clears throat> the cheapest thing you could ever use. I don't need no inserters to go here, hundreds of dollars. I don't need no power probe, hundreds of dollars. <clears throat> a simple, simple thing like this. $299. <clears throat> this costs $299, any hardware store. This wire... I put it in here, into the terminal. You'll see the video. When you see the video, you'll understand, hopefully, much, much better. This is for a starter motor, for headlight relays, for any relay in that panel. You take a, a wire, and why did I choose this? Why did I not put a piece of solder or a T-pin? <clears throat> I don't like T-pins. I do not like T-pins. A piece of solder will break off right away, and it might short one terminal to another. This is sturdy wire. You can bend it. And it's only $2.99. The cheapest thing. You'll see the video. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. I can put a, 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 a piece of wire here, piece of wire here, piece of wherever you want in any relay terminal. I could put it in, put this on top of it, as you'll see in the video. And I measured the output of this. That's, to, that's with a load. I call that with load conditions. That's the most precise and accurate measurements that you can make. How many channels have you seen they take out the relay, 
Okay, I have power here, power here. It's not power. It's voltage, voltage, and I have here, here. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything to me. That means absolutely nothing. Let's say if I jump this. How many people will tell you, first jump it? Well, okay, I'll jump it. Even if I jump this too, even if I jump these two, what is it going to tell me? That this side is working. The fuel pump is working. What does that mean? That the problem is on the other side. How about the computer? How are you going to prove to me that the computer is, computer is is working by jumping the side? You just proved to me that the fuel pump is working. Congratulations. You just saved yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Great. Great. What about the computer? How much do you think a new computer costs? How about if this wire is the problem and I measure 12 volts here, 12 volts over here, and zero volts here? Where's the problem then? Green, dark green, white wire. This wire might be broken from here to here. Now, if I have 12 volts here, zero volts here, guess what? Where my problem might be? Between here and here. If I have 12 volts over here at the fuse, which you do not see, but I have zero volts coming over here from the power train control module or at the fuel pump, guess what? I have nothing coming from the power train control module. There's a problem over there. So, like a comment that I got one time where he said he went to the dealership and he said there was a fuel pump problem, but it wasn't a fuel pump. It was a connection between the, the, the computer to the relay. I forgot the name of, of, of that viewer. It's been a while since I saw that, but he did mention that the wire was the problem that they found in the dealership. That's a difference between hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Right? For an unnecessary labor rate, like I said, 120, 140, whatever it is, right? Of two hours. If you charge 120 labor rate an hour, let's say, for example, and it's a two hour job, just labor, that's 240 just for labor. Forget about the parts. You can have a cheap part to put a sensor, but it might take you two hours just to put that sensor to take things apart for a camshaft sensor or a crankshaft. It depends what it is. If you have a power power window problem, you have to take the regulator to change the regulator on the motor. That might take you that might take you an hour or forty five minutes just to get that just to get that. Replace it, put it back. Labor is also part of the issue. Okay? So therefore, try to imagine this. Now, hopefully when you see this, you'll understand exactly. And the reason I'm doing this with this in this video is because I want you to apply this theory to every single time. This is not written here. You see how technical these manuals are? As technical as they are, they don't even say 87 here, 30 or 85, 86. They don't even mention that. I have to apply it myself. So therefore, it doesn't matter if it's a starter motor over here. It doesn't matter if there's headlamps over here, a hundred lights over here. I don't care. It doesn't matter if it's a turn signal over here. It doesn't matter if it's a, 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 a body control module. I know the theory. 30 here is this one, 12 volts all the time. Here, 87, that's questionable. If he's working, I'll measure 12 volts here. If he's not working, I will measure zero volts over here. Question is, why is he not working? Is he not working because this itself is not good or because he's not doing his job? That's why I say, put the wire here, 299, measure 12 volts here. Now, let's say there's a problem. What did I just say over here? I'm gonna measure 12 volts over here. Where do you see a voltage drop over here? There is no voltage drop here across the switch. 12 volts here, 12 volts over here. 12 volts here, 12 volts over here. I lose no voltage from here to here. I just gave you a statement and I said, I want to measure 12 volts over here. Where is this is going to ground? If I measure 12 volts over here, I know that this is working. I just made that statement. However, however, does that mean that this is good? Let's say there's an open over here. In the connector or the fuel pump, whatever. Let's say there's something open over here. I'll still measure 12 volts here. Why? Where am I going to lose the voltage? I'm not going to lose the voltage across him. Not going to lose the voltage across him. I'm still going to have 12 volts over here. Right? I'm still going to have 12 volts over here. But I'm measuring with respect to ground. Even though I measure 12 volts over here, what about if his resist if this resistance to ground went up, increased? Right? 
let's say this is three volts here. That's why I put this volt. Let's say, let's, say, let's say with resistance, because Ohm's law tells us resistance times current equal to voltage. So therefore, let's say instead of zero volts here, I measure three volts or four volts. I'm still going to measure 12 volts with here respect to ground. So therefore, this is important to understand also the concept. I'll measure 12 volts over here when this is working. Great. If it's not working, I can also measure 12 volts because you know why? I'm not going to drop the voltage anywhere else. So what's going to convince me? What's going to convince me if there's current working? Let's say this ground opened up. This black wire just broke. It broke. Right? 12 volts here, 12 volts over here, 12 volts over here. Great. I think to myself, right? Is there current flowing? And you always know that once, one thing that I always teach is current flow. Current flow, current flow, current flow. That's what I teach. So, you know what I want to do? I want to measure current flow. Because if I measure 12 volts regardless of the situation, let me measure current. But where am I going to measure current? Number one. Number two, what am I going to use to measure current? Okay? That's where we get to something Notice this one, and notice the difference between this one. I want to measure current. Why? Because I want to see if there's current flowing here. If there's current flowing, that means I have a complete path to ground. If I don't measure current, that means somewhere it's open. This circuit opened up. Great. That's a great theory. But let's put it to use, right? Here's a meter over here. I want to measure, according to this, 20 amps up to 20 amps so let's say this is 17 16 amps what can we, can i use this meter no if you said yes you're wrong this only goes up to 10 amps a problem it's a good theory that you said i want to measure th current by taking this out and putting this in in place of it like you'll see in the videos like i'll do but your theory is bad because it's only up to 10 amps this is this is more Maybe 16 amps, 50 amps, we don't know, but we don't take a chance, right? Because this is put in, we put this in series, number one. That's one problem. Another problem, the one that I always use over here. See this one over here? Can I put this one here in series? Look at this meter, the one I just showed you. If you said I could put this one in series, you're wrong. Why? Where do you see any ports over here to measure current? You don't. And you know why? This is a clamp on. This is not one that you put in series. This is one. See how many? One, two, three, four ports. Only two. This is meant to be put in series. Okay? This is not to me. This is not meant to be put in series. That's why you see no slots for amps. See no slots. No slots. Volts, amps, and, her and hertz. This is meant to be used as a clamp on. See? To clamp over a wire. Here's the wire. To clamp over this wire. Like I showed you. I like this one because it has a small jaw. That's Now, let me ask you another question. Problem. Can I take out this fuse and measure current? Uh, should I be afraid of a, a, uh, of awakening the modules? Will I awaken this module? The question, uh, the answer to that is, I'm not worried about parasitic drawers. The situation here is not where a parasitic drawer is where you left your car overnight or a few hours, you came back and the battery died.